Hello everyone, and welcome to my Days of Our Lives 24 channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. EJ takes a stab at blaming everything on Stefan, and Johnny and Julie understand some things turned out badly at the lodge. As we get into Days of Our Lives, we see a snow-filled shot of Smith Island and Johnny and Chanel awaken on the sofa in the Horton Lodge and Johnny tells his new lady it's public speculate day trailed by kiss your better half day and get exposed in a lodge day. As they begin grinding away, however, Julie jumps in, then, at that point, surges out with sickening dread. During breakfast, Julie attempts to leave, yet the lovebirds tell her they're snowed in. Be that as it may, it's April. Julie shouts. What's more, presently she's caught in the lodge with two hot love birds. Julie considers what they'll do, then, at that point, apologizes for attacking their special first night and recommends they go skip in the snow and gain experiences. She decks them out in a diverse collection of old winter garments, unfortunately. Is it true that we are five? Johnny asks when Julie returns to the next room. They run out into a tad, then return to let Julie know how extraordinary a period they had. Julie's really glad and recommends a round of pretenses, alongside some hot chocolate and cognac. In pretenses, they notice the fire is getting low and Johnny volunteers to get more wood. Julie and Chanel discuss how extraordinary he is, then, at that point, get into how Paulina is doing. Chanel tells Julie the lodge is a particularly extraordinary spot and Julie thinks back about being there with her grandparents, Tom and Alice. It's similar to the time case, which she feels was intended to challenge the new ages. Like a riddle. Chanel then proposes she ought to go out to help Johnny. Nicole's unobtrusively savoring espresso the de Mara manner as EJ strolls in. She was out for a hurry to clear her head, however she was unable to quit pondering the most recent couple of months, from losing the child, to Holly's concerns and presently she feels like she's somewhat lost. EJ advises her to take as much time as necessary and sort out what she maintains that should do now. Holly strolls in before they leave for the enormous public interview and says she was trusting they'd have a day off, however EJ illuminates her the blizzard just missed them, so unfortunate development. Holly has statement of regret letters for Tate and his family yet doesn't have any idea how to convey them. Nicole requests to take them and says she's pleased with Holly. EJ is not excited to need to put out an open acknowledgement and when Holly apologizes, EJ says something about her disproving him for not being liable for the medications. Holly erupts, telling them perhaps she did it since her life isn't too awesome. I'm on my third stepfather and FYI, your name accompanies a ton of stuff. At the bar, Brady, Tate and Teresa are eating before EJ's enormous general acknowledgement. Tate's folks need to converse with him about seeing Holly at school. It's unavoidable, however he really wants to avoid her. They're simply attempting to safeguard him. Holly won't mess up his life. Tate surrenders. It makes sense to him, he won't spend time with Holly. Be that as it may, he has something he needs to converse with them about. He needs to begin working at the Brady Bar once more, yet Teresa doesn't believe it's smart. He really wants to zero in on school. Brady concurs. Tate continues to push, yet before they can get far, Holly and Nicole stroll into the pub, Teresa curses and Nicole tells Holly they ought to go to Sweet Pieces. Yet, Holly needs to distribute her letters of conciliatory sentiment. Nicole hesitantly concurs and Holly hands them over to the shocked family, her hand waiting on Tate's as he takes it. He peruses it cheerfully, recalling giving her his pullover and snuggling. Teresa and Brady say thanks to her too, Teresa fairly hesitantly, and Brady is happy they're reaching the finish of this present circumstance. However, Teresa clarifies that the letters change nothing about spending time with Tate. Nicole snaps that they comprehend and will maintain their wishes, they head out to eat on the opposite side of the bar and Holly apologizes again for harming Nicole. They repeat that they love one another, just to hear Tate yell what in blazes, at his telephone. Teresa sees something about the pill-pushing Tate returning to school, blows a gasket and says she will converse with the head. Brady demands it'll stop when EJ discloses his expression of remorse. That's what Teresa questions. Teens don't watch the news. Be that as it may, Holly comes over and says she'll ensure everybody at school realizes it wasn't Tate. Brady's the main one to say thanks to her. 
Sloane is meeting with Stefan at the Salem PD, a piece bewildered that he worked out an arrangement before he even employed a lawyer. According to Indeed, he, presently he's employing her. Yet, he recoils when she specifies a retainer. His asset access is waiting at present. Sloane begins to leave, however Stefan vows to abundantly pay her. Furthermore, he realizes she really wants the assistance since her training has dialed back. Sloane denies this, however says that he'll need to pay twofold since he doesn't have cash forthright. Stefan concurs then makes sense of she's there, even with his arrangement, since he has no question EJ will attempt deceiving him. EJ comes in, amazed that the consultation was climbed, then, at that point, asks why Stefan got a lawyer. Stefan says he has little to no faith in his sibling by any means. He wanted somebody on his side. They rehash the details of the arrangement and how Stefan got the arrangement by extorting EJ with implicating proof. Yet, they're family, Stefan says, and he needs his finances back when he returns home. EJ laughs at him returning home, however Stefan cautions him it's that, or EJ will pay. At the consultation, EJ makes sense of how Stefan has helped remove sedates and makes sense of the supplication bargain. Time served is all he really wants. The adjudicator feigns exacerbation, horrified at the explicit nepotism that EJ is appearing to his sibling. The appointed authority isn't happy with what EJ's introduced, which is when Sloane steps in to give a breakdown of all the assistance Stefan's given in capturing those in the medication ring and checking the endeavors of a notable medication top dog. She then discusses Clyde's aggressive messages on Gabby, which incorporated her being harmed on the grounds that Stefan attempted not doing what Clyde needed. She imagines that between him being constrained and how he's aided the police, time served ought to be sufficient. The appointed authority is keeping everything in mind and she'll tell them all when she arrives at a decision Stefan asks what it implies. Pause, Sloane says. She'll check in later. At the point when EJ and Stefan are distant from everyone else, Stefan needs to understand what in the world EJ was doing. He purposely introduced a feeble case, yet EJ says he did precisely exact thing they consented to, no more, no less. They then, at that point, exchange dangers to and fro. EJ can in any case educate individuals concerning Harris, regardless of whether Stefan has the recording yet. My coercion bests your shakedown anytime. He stomps out. In the show's last couple of seconds, EJ's as of now wrapping up the question and answer session when everybody shows up. As he strolls over, Brady requests to realize what occurred. EJ acts ignorant, yet Teresa says he began before the press even arrived. EJ movements to the person there, who's his PR fellow. Tate persuades his folks to drop it and leave, however Brady requests a composed duplicate of what he said. Nicole apologizes after EJ left and demands he's unfortunately he sucks at saying sorry boo-hoo. Poor EJ. Teresa Mock cries. In any case, Nicole apologizes for the entire family and they head out in a different direction, Tate and Holly's look waiting. Julie's doing crossword perplexes alone in the lodge when she ponders where the children are. She calls for them from the yard, then, at that point, returns inside. They've been out there excessively lengthy. Similarly as she's going to leave, Johnny returns with wood. He needed to go farther in light of the fact that the wood they had was wet. Julie asks where Chanel is and they alarm. Johnny didn't see her.